YouTube, Wes here. Well, as you see, the Briggs and Stratton on this old MTD mower will not start anymore. Yeah, I'm not, not too happy with this mower, actually, to tell you the truth. I bought this mower in around 2011 when we moved into the Duck Pond house. Used it for about four years at that house. Near the During the last season of cutting, the mower overheated at some point, and after that, it was never the same. It would always be down on power, hard to start, that kind of thing. I mean, I did everything you're supposed to do with these engines. I, I did the break-in procedure. I changed the oil, the filter, the spark plug every year with the Briggs & Stratton tune-up kit, their, their oil, their filter, their spark plug, all that stuff. Still, this thing only lasted four years, basically. Um, I didn't use it at the last house because the uh, lawn care was included in the rent of that house. So what I did, I went over to the old Harbor Freight and got one of these Predator gas mower engines. I've been watching a channel here on YouTube called Cars and Cameras, and they do a lot of stuff with these Predator motors. They seem to be pretty tough, pretty well built. People call them Honda clones because they're kind of like a Honda overhead valve small, small engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that engine on this mower. The mower is still good. The deck's still fine. It's not rusty or anything. Like I said, I mean, I bought it in 2011. I used it for four years, and then it's been stored in storage in the past three years. And there's nothing really wrong with the mower itself. It's just the engine sucks. So I can't, I can't say anything good about these, uh, these Briggs and Stratton 6.75 engines. Okay, so first of all, we'll start with what I picked up today. I'm not sure if this is all I'm going to need to put this engine on this mower, but uh, this is a pretty good start based on the other videos I saw here on YouTube. First of all, the Predator engine itself, 173cc overhead valve engine, vertical shaft for lawnmowers, basically any kind of vertical shaft equipment, some tillers, other kind of things like that have vertical shafts. Engine does not come with any oil, so you need to get some oil. So I picked up, uh, actually I picked up two quarts of straight 30 weight oil. This is the recommended oil viscosity for my my area. My climate is a hot climate. Um, if you're in, in more of a milder climate, a 1030 is probably more suggested. But uh, yeah, it's it's really hot here, and 30 straight 30 weight oil is uh, good. So I got two quarts of this. I got one for the break in uh, for just you know the first 30 minutes basically, and then another one after that to uh, fill it up for the season kind of thing. I also did get one of these little funnels here because this is the the oil fill on this one is kind of a little bit more difficult than it was on the Briggs & Stratton there. I also got this uh, throttle cable from Lowe's. Yeah, the Briggs & Stratton doesn't have a throttle. It just has sort of a built-in uh, speed that it runs at. and It has a governor that it uses to sort of try to maintain that speed as much as it can, but it does not have a throttle. And there's a throttle built into this, this motor. You can wire it into place if you want, but it makes it more difficult because you want to you know put it wide open to start and then you want to slow it down as you're using it kind of thing so it'll be easier just to install this and this was really cheap so I grab that that's going to get mounted on the handle the handle already has the brake and everything on that and the brake's going to connect to this so that's already done um, and the last thing I picked up is some hardware and I did some research and what was suggested to for the hardware was eight millimeter by 40 bolts and nuts so I got some nylock locking nuts and the 8x40 bolts and nuts and washers. That's what I've got right now. I may need a blade adapter. That probably would be the only thing else I would think I would need to make this work and make it work well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into it and let's get this uh, piece of junk Briggs and Stratton off of here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start tearing this down is getting the, uh, trying to get things disconnected here. So I'm going to get rid of this handle cord here. Put that back in there. That's so what we're going to do. Push this far forward as we can, and it just sort of zigzag part right there. Pulled out of the handle, that should loosen things up. Now this should be much looser. And then on this end, it's sort of a similar situation. Got a zigzag on it again, and it pulls out of the hole there. So the only thing that's holding this engine to the to the deck anymore is the the, the bolts itself. Uh, that are on the bottom side. So let's flip the mower up and get to those bolts. Okay, so first things first, we're going to take the blade off on this particular mower. It happens to be a 5 8 And we're going to try the old impact here. See what it can do. No problems there. Um, and I think I'm going to take the motor off of the 
the deck before I work on trying to get this blade adapter off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox this Predator motor and make sure our blade adapter is going to work. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to buy another one. So let's get this thing unboxed, check it out, and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so we get our instruction booklet, of course. Predator 173. Shaft on the bottom. Tilt this up. All right, this is carburetor side. That's one thing when you're working on small engines. If you tilt it on its side, you always want the carburetor facing up. Otherwise, you're going to get oil and stuff is going to leak from the crankcase into your into your uh, carburetor, and it's not going to want to start after that. So, always make sure when you tilt it up on its side to make sure the carburetor is facing up. Okay guys, so as expected, uh, I took this blade adapter off the old mower and it is not the correct size. This is uh, for a larger shaft and the keyway is also too large. Uh, so if we put this over this shaft, it's just, it's not gonna work. So uh, what, what you have to do, if this is the case with your mower, you might not need to do this. You might already have the correct size. I went over to my Lowe's here and apparently this blade adapter kit that they sell at Lowe's for $8 is the correct size and the keyway is definitely smaller than my original one and the, the shaft size is also smaller than my original one so I think this is probably going to do the, do the job um, people online are saying that this does the job um, it's a 7 8 shaft and I believe the keyway is 3 16 oh the specifications even though they don't really give you these specifications this says you know, it's funny, that's a that's an MTD mower that I was pulling my old engine off of, and this says it's for MTD, and not not for that MTD. So it's it's kind of kind of confusing in that sense, but let's go ahead and get this keyway knocked out of the shaft on this new engine. We're not going to need it, um, and make sure that this fits. That's our next step. And that was easy enough. I'll put that aside somewhere. These things are always handy to have. Never know when you need one of those to fix something. Uh, so let's get our new blade adapter out here and check the fitment on this. And yep, that's a good fit right there. Nice and snug, not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, I'll go ahead and thread a bolt in there just to hold it in for now, even though I can put it on later, but yeah, we'll just put it on later. Genuine parts blade adapter kit 748-0376. I'll put a link in the uh, link in the show notes on on uh, where to get this at Lowe's. It's cheaper to get this at Lowe's than to get it online. So if you can go to if you do have a Lowe's in your area, maybe Home Depot sells them as well. Uh, it's cheaper to get get it that way. Okay, so the next thing I think I'm going to do is actually get the mower, the new engine bolted to the the mower deck here. And as you see, we got three holes here in the deck. They're going to line up with three holes on the engine over there. One of the holes in the bottom of the engine is threaded. The other two are just straight through. So you're gonna. This is where we're gonna need to use these bolts and nuts that I got. So uh, the kit from Harbor Freight comes with this little. Uh, you know, it's got a spark plug tool, and then it's got a couple of bolts here that uh, fit the threading on the bottom of the block. Uh, so we'll use one of these, probably the shorter of the two into the bottom of the block. And then for the other two holes, we'll use these eight millimeter um, by 40 bolts and lock nuts. And I also have some eight millimeter uh, flat washers here that I'll use. Okay, so I have the short threaded bolt in hand and it's gonna match up with the threaded hole on the block that's gonna go in the top hole here on the deck. 
Um, it's going to be on the carburetor side, so that's going to be facing up. So everything should be good to uh, load the engine in and start this bolt. All right, now that that's uh, started in the block, I'm going to go ahead and send one of these bolts through that I purchased. Get that in place. Take my other one here. Um, actually, I'm going to pull that back out. I want to put a washer underneath here. So I'll put a washer on this one and go ahead and put that one in. I'll pull this one back out. Put a washer in this one. going to take and grab some of my nylon locking nuts and put a washer behind each one and attach it to these two bolts on the other side where the engine's coming through so we can get that uh, keep those bolts from falling out when I turn the turn the mower up on its uh, right side up okay now that we have the uh, all the bolts and nuts started uh, I'm gonna start by tightening them down first thing I'm gonna do is tighten down this one that threads into the block itself it comes with the comes with the engine it's a 12 millimeter so we can just easily crank that in and get it tightened up All right, then the metric hardware from the hardware store, for some reason, generally you get odd numbered fasteners. These are 13 millimeter, both the nuts and bolts. Uh, so we're gonna use 13 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench on top to hold them in place while I uh, tighten those up. So next I think I'm going to go ahead and just finish up on the bottom side here, go ahead and get the blade adapter and blade mounted and just get it done with so I don't have to tip it up again. So, yeah, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. There's a key in here and it goes into the keyway on the shaft there. And you get your blade. It's got its sort of little funky design there. This other part that comes with the uh, blade adapter kit that has its two little dimples that sort of go in there. That's it. Done with the bottom side. So we can tip this baby up and start working on the top side. Okay, so the next thing I think I'm going to go ahead and do, since it's got to be done anyway, is start with this brake mechanism here. Um, the cable hooks into here, and then the outer sheath sort of clips into here, so it should be pretty much straightforward the way the, uh, way the old one came out here. This sort of Z-shaped rod should go through there like that, and then put our little thing in there like that, and it uh, should be good to go. Uh, hook it up back up top where the handle's at, and get that all set up and see how it works. Okay, so we're just going to hook this in, like so, seems to be working as it should. Alright, so the next part is the throttle cable itself, and we have two different ends here. You'll see uh, one end we have where the sheathing on the cable is stripped back a bit, uh, and then you have this sort of uh, Z-shaped end on it. And then the other end has this little ferrule on it, um, and then another Z-shaped sort of bend in it. So this is the end that goes up to the handle uh, to where the throttle itself is going to be at right here. This is the throttle itself. Uh, the ferrule is going to fit into this little slot right here like this, uh, like so. And then this Z is going to connect in through this hole in the lever here. Uh, but we're going to start by mounting this to the engine itself um, so we have uh, what we have is a clamp here with a screw in it 
uh, and then the throttle itself where the Z is going to slide into. So let's go ahead and get that set up first. Uh, so we'll set the set the throttle lever aside. You don't need that yet. Uh, but this one just sort of uh, fishes in to the hole just like so. So it's in place, and then you want to clamp down on this exposed sheathing part. Um, have to get a screwdriver and get that mounted. Hey YouTube, Wes here checking back in. Well, it's been about 18 months since the first part of this video. You've seen about two mowing seasons and the Predator swapped mower is still going strong, still going great. Uh, I'm really happy with the results on this. Um, it starts real easy. It's got plenty of power. Uh, it's just, it's, a, it's been a great thing overall upgrade, you know, saved, saved the lawn mower from the landfill very efficient it's very smooth it's a lot quiet more quieter than the original motor um, it's got as I said it's got plenty of power very very happy with the results so I'm gonna leave all the all the things you need to know down below in the show notes um, links to all the, the items I used to make this swap happen links to any tools I used all that kind of stuff um, if the, there happens to be any Amazon links those will be affiliate links I do have to uh, let you know that in advance. Uh, I'll get a small commission for anything you buy from Amazon, but it won't cost you any extra. It'll be the normal Amazon price for those any of those items that you pick up. I can highly recommend this swap if you have an old motor that's uh, an old lawnmower that's giving you problems, but otherwise is in is in good shape. Go for it. It's a good deal. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire this baby up and get the lawn mowed. 